Welcome back, Regular Drews. We hope you were just listening to the previous episode because this is the continuation of our Ghost of Gordon Hall episode. So do not start listening to this episode um, unless you've listened to part one, unless you just really want to be spoiled, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we are about to jump right into some spoilers here. So uh, if you haven't already, go listen and we'll jump back into things. We wake up on our third evening, so again, a whole day has passed. Supposedly, we've been out all day with the search party looking for Jesslyn, walking around the grounds of Black Rock Island, but we are now back in the house in the evening. We see Charlotte again. This time, she's, like, fading away. She's, like, reaching out towards us, trying to grab something, but, yeah, just just another spooky instance. At one point, she's, like, trying to sneak past us in the hallway. It looks like she, like... You didn't see that? I didn't get that one. She's I've never seen like, that one. Kind of scooting up like, against the edge of the wall. Like, oh, up I, maybe I have seen that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But not this time. Not this time. But then as soon as she gets to you, she like dissipates and disappears. But, but yeah. There are a few other puzzles at this point in the game. The big one is that there is this metal door in the cellar that we've been unable to open until now. Once we solve the puzzle to open it, we just see a dark tunnel in front of us. And there's a person sitting on the ground. It's Jessalyn! Jessalyn! Uh, Jessalyn's just hanging out in the cellar this whole time. Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> but she's safe, safe and sound. She's here. Um, and she starts telling us, you know, you can't tell anyone that I'm here. You can't tell anyone that you've seen me. But this I need help, bitch. basically. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes. So you're going to take it from here? Sure. So, yeah, she tells us she's okay. It's it's fine, but don't tell anybody that I'm here. She tells us this whole story that apparently Harper found out somehow that she was coming to Black Rock Island with Addison the other night and decided to come here to sneak up on her, basically. So when this happened, she was startled and she screamed. So this is what Addison heard and what we can hear on the ghost hunting footage that we listened to. Harper, at this point, tells Jessalyn that Clara is responsible for Charlotte's death. So Jessalyn... (sighs) Shock and surprise. (laughs) I know, we're all so shocked. Um, (laughs) So Jessalyn has been hiding down here since that night to try to find out if this is true. Um, She tells us that her mother has a necklace in a briefcase upstairs that she always keeps with her um, and that Charlotte told Harper to get this locket if anything ever happened to her. So Jesslyn asks us to go get this locket while Harper makes a distraction. Wow. Um, At this point, I really wish we could just tell Jesslyn, like, Oh, you're looking for a locket? Well, that's so strange. I have this fucking locket in my inventory. Is this what you're looking for? Um, but we can't do that. We, we can after we get the other half yes, of the locket. Because you need both pieces. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. Uh, but so once we go get that um, necklace and return it along with this missing piece to Jesslyn, um, we have to solve a puzzle to open it correctly because apparently this is like an heirloom from the civil war and that if you don't open it in the correct way it's it's rigged to destroy the message that's inside of it once we are able to open it jesselyn is too upset to read the note that's inside uh which i find really odd but instead she decides to just go confront her mother But we can read it, Um, and we see that it is a note from Charlotte that just says Clara can't be trusted and that Harper needs to know the truth. Make a note of this, y'all. we got to talk about this This later. This makes no sense. Make a mental note. Clara can't be trusted and Harper needs to know the truth. Okay. Sorry. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) Um, Very fascinating. Um, But after we do that... At this point, honestly, it's it's kind of really confusing what it is we're supposed to be doing. And I I remember of all of my playthroughs on this game, I'm like, wait, where did everybody go? Because suddenly nobody's around. 
Wade's not in the graveyard. Yeah. Clara's not um, in the living room. Harper's not downstairs. Jessalyn's not downstairs either. Well, presumably Harper's <clears throat> creating a distraction. Right. So maybe that's got Wade involved as well. And then Jessalyn wants to talk to Clara. So maybe they're off somewhere. But okay. you think we would still Fair enough. Them. Fair enough. Fair enough. But so the only person who is around that we could speak to um, is Colton. So I guess we have to talk to Colton, even though at this point he seems like the least interesting person to speak to, considering all of the other stuff that we right. have just learned. Um, but when we speak to him, he tells us something very interesting that I think that I have so many questions about also. Um, he tells us that the night Charlotte died, he was there and he saw her leaving the crypt. Um, like right before she went to her birthday party um, and she handed him a note, which he now gives to us. I have to point this out because this is, this is so confusing to me. How old is Colton and how was he there that night? So in the family tree, we know that Charlotte died in 89. Jessalyn was also born in 89. So presumably Jessalyn, if she ever met Charlotte, it was obviously way too young for her to remember um, we can assume from this that Colton is a, a, a little bit older than Jessalyn. Sure. He can't be massively older than Jessalyn, right. I wouldn't think. Otherwise, how would they be school friends? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I want to say that in some point, at, at some point in the past, I somehow read something or read into something or did the math to find out that he was four years older than Jessalyn, okay. which still a four-year-old. I don't How remember, do you remember what I was four. Okay, maybe we can give it give the situation a lot of grace because of the significance that like it later played, right? So maybe the mm -hmm. reason why he remembers it is because it was a really big deal, everything that happened. Sure. And maybe people have spoken to him over and over and over about this. So he remembers it because sure. of that. So my thing is that even if Colton was there and, and he whatever is that Charlotte hands off this massively important note to a four-year-old four-year-old probably at most let's be honest a legitimate toddler she gives this yeah. actual toddler a a very important note and asks him to keep it for how many years Regarding something that Harper needs to know the truth about, why not just tell Harper what? another, I mean, she would have been 18-ish, so an adult, not a child, not a toddler. Very confusing. Um, but anyway, he gives that to us, and he also tells us that he saw someone there the night of the fire and says it wasn't an accident, but he also doesn't say who it was that he saw, and we also don't ask who it was that he saw. Yeah, this is a really rushed conversation. She's just like, oh, thanks for this clue. Bye. I'm sorry. He just drops a legitimate bomb on us. Um, I mean, I know that like we kind of already got the message from Harper and the note in the locket that we think Clara is responsible for Charlotte's death. But but Colton is like giving us like first person perspective of what has happened that night. And we're just like, cool. See ya. Yep what whatever yep. um so upon reading the note it directs us to dig behind a certain symbol um in the tunnel and if we do that we find a hidden safe yeah once we unlock that we find charlotte's will which is just so classic to find a safe and a will inside of the mm. safe love it a mystery nerd in me loves it um oh, yeah. but when we read that we can see that she changed this will the day before she died, disinheriting Clara and leaving all of her estate, property, and effects to Harper. So presumably that includes the Thornton Company. So, yes, she did own the Thornton Company. We'll have to talk, yes, about, we'll have to talk about that too. It ties into the incest theory. <laughs> Go on. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so... This must mean that if Clara learned about this that day, she was probably pretty angry the day that Charlotte died. So, yeah. Okay. So we've heard it from Harper. I think we've kind of heard it from Colton, I guess. 
Um, we heard it from Charlotte herself, and now we're reading this will that is like, okay, this is motive, right? Yeah. As soon as we have read that, we turn around and there is smoke filling the tunnel. And Nancy proclaims that the house is on fire, which I think is a massive assumption at this point, but I guess it is a lot of smoke. Something's on fire. And at this point, we have the choice as Nancy to either go inside the house and rescue people or exit the tunnel and get out of the house uh, for our own safety. Oh, and that goes straight out to the crypt, doesn't it? It does. Yes. Yeah. I didn't. I never thought that you could just leave everyone. I thought it was I just Harper and Clara that everyone. you can decide on. But no, well, I I've never, right. I've never oh. actually done that because I'm a goody goody, and of course, well, of course, I'm going to rescue my BFF Harper. But it's oh, funny yeah. <laughs> that even if you do rescue Harper and Jesslyn, you can still choose not to rescue Clara, who we've le- we learned mm-hmm. has holed herself up in Charlotte's room and is and won't come out. Right. My says that she deserves to, or that um, it's too late for me now, Nancy. Charlotte's never going to let me leave this place. And Nancy's like, come on, you idiot. Let's go (laughs) before we both die. (laughs) So, yeah, if we do get everyone, if we do save everyone and um, we we get an achievement at the end of the game um, and the game ends with everyone safe outside. I don't know uh, what happens if you don't save everyone because I've never done that. (laughs) I watched, you can find all the endings on YouTube. I watched yeah. them all. Yeah. Interesting. It just, yeah. It just, Does it, it just changes skip over? depending on who died. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. skips over some parts. Yeah. Honestly, part of me is like, Clara deserves to die. <laughs> um, well, Nancy says it very well. She says that Clara deserves the opportunity to pay for her crimes. Okay. But we have to talk about this though, because does she? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I mean, not does she deserve to pay for her crimes. Obviously, she does deserve to pay for her crimes. My question is, does she pay for her crimes? Because oh, no, she does not. we get no. absolutely no indication that she has. Um, what we learn is we learn that Clara explains to Jesslyn about the night that Charlotte died. She says that she was terrified of being pushed out of the family when she learned that Charlotte, Charlotte changed her will. And she was jealous of Charlotte. So she lit the house on fire to scare Charlotte somehow, but the fire got out of control. Um, And apparently she's just been heartbroken ever since. Um, Which is just, I just, Claire is just such a fucking narcissist. I can't, I can't. Who does arson as a prank? Well, yeah, or it's like, oh, I'm going to scare you by burning down the house. No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, and the Thornton house is on fire right now because of the faulty furnace that Harper was using in the basement. And the fire department also insists that everybody go to the hospital for exposure to toxic fumes um, and that we can probably attribute all the ghostly things that we have seen and that everybody has seen to carbon monoxide poisoning. Maybe. I have serious thoughts about this. (laughs) that I want to talk about with you too. Um, We also learned that in the weeks that passed after the fire, Jesslyn takes control of the family company. Um, She gives Wade a position on the board and tasks him with overseeing day-to-day operations. Um, And we also learned that apparently Colton and Jesslyn are on the road to patching up their friendship, which who freaking cares. Um, But they are (laughs) definitely not getting married now. Um, But apparently both are relieved about not getting married. So it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, Harper disappears shortly after the fire, but Wade and Jesslyn track her down and convince her to rejoin the family, which I find this just honestly ridiculous. But, um, and, and Harper only agrees to quote unquote, rejoin the family provided that they tear down Thornton Hall, completely raise it and in its place, build a public park dedicated to the memory of the lives lost on Black Rock Island. Which feels like the only way to deal with plantations, like make it a memory of people who and suffered yet and somehow, died there. Corey, 
And yet somehow, even at the end of this game, where we're literally building a memorial to all of the people who have lost their lives on Black Rock Island, we still don't actually name the fact that most of the people who have died on Black Rock Island have been enslaved people. So, right. yes. I mean, I mean, like we literally, we go through this whole thing. We don't, we don't have a single mention of slavery. And this, this place is about the civil war. We don't. Weird, vague references to workers. These people were enslaved. Enslaved. Yeah. And, and honestly, even we spell it out. We spell it freaking out in when we talk about Wade going to prison and saying that, you know, the Thornton family is up to their old tricks by locking people into the factory and forcing them to work. Right. So mm -hmm. he's saying that like literally even in the, I don't know, the eighties or nineties, whenever he did go to jail, the Thornton family They're exploiting their workers. still ha had, you know, basically enslaved people working for them we say all that but we can't say that there were enslaved people working here during the civil war and that's all the people who died on this island we can't say that this is a memorial to them and their lives just the people <laughs> the lives lost so mostly charlotte but like right you know also those other people as well it's got to be this white girl who died at a masquerade party where she was dressed in 19th century clothing. Mm -hmm. I just, I just. Yeah. So, so problematic, right? We said that at the beginning. I'm sorry. I'm shouting. No, you're fine. You're fine. Let's, <laughs> let's back up a little bit. Let's yes. go over the facts. Let's go chronologically. Yes. Let's so, do it. This is a plantation. There's no... There's no argument about that. Um, you know, I've seen arguments. It's not, you know, the Thorntons didn't own slaves because they didn't inherit this property or inherit. I guess they didn't come to own this property until after the Civil War. Bottom line, this was a plantation. It started as a plantation. There were enslaved people that were forced to work here on this island. We don't specifically, we never say what the Thornton family business is. We find a cotton gin <laughs> in the house. Mm -hmm. We can make assumptions, right? Uh, no, we no, do no. Know we do. We do learn. It's their their cotton processing. That's what they do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I think okay. I don't remember who mentions it or where we learn it, but I specifically remember someone saying cotton processing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hundred percent. So this started as a a cotton processing plantation, right? We're in Georgia. We're in the eighteen hundreds. We do know that the gray lady, which do we, do we ever no. find out her name? Is she, she's not Jeb's no. wife, is she? I think it's, is it maybe Mariana? No, that's Harper's oh. mother. Harper and Claire, Charlotte's mother. That's not so Dodge. She's like a hundred years. Dodge and oh. Mariana okay. are um, okay, their okay, parents. Okay. They died in the plane crash. Uh, so the gray lady, whoever she was in this family, I think she's probably a couple generations above the the guy whose diary found Jeb, who um, they call them the founding members of the Thornton family. But I think that the gray lady is probably someone a generation above that or so. That's she gross. is a gross and rooted in colonialism as well. <laughs> yeah, so... absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. It's so nasty. She, she lives in the South, but she is a spy for the North. So in I guess a re as a reward for her service during the Civil War, the government takes control of this plantation and awards it to the Thornton family, who then hire hire quote unquote workers to do the family business. Okay, but so when they built that factory on the island, it was somewhere within the years of because i specifically made a note of this 1842 to 1887 and the 13th amendment was what 1865 we also know to this day that there were many places in the south that slavery continued after the end of the civil war and because yeah. people just didn't tell anybody that they were continuing right. this practice so 
Abraham Lincoln didn't say slavery's done and everyone right. said okay. <laughs> It went on for years after this. Some pe- yeah, like you said, some people didn't even know freed. that they were supposedly yeah. supposed to be free now because it was years later because just because they, they had no were, means you know, to know because they, told, they were on owned by other people. Right. Yeah. Right. So just because the Thornton family procured this land after the end of the Civil War does not mean we cannot assume that that doesn't mean that they didn't own slaves, but. Even even if you could argue that they didn't, these were still people that were mm-hmm. exploited. These were still people that died while working in a place that they literally could not afford to quit, that they were literally locked in and could not physically leave. That right there is a huge problem. Whether or not they were technically enslaved really is irrelevant here because right. this family right. was still Well, and my this. issue with this whole thing is that the game very much goes to the trouble to make sure that we as the audience knows that the practices that the Thornton family is involved in are wrong, that it's, that it's gross and terrible and, you know, Wade hates it. Mm -hmm. Right. All of this stuff. And yet we can't say that it's slavery. Right. We can't say that. Why can't we say that? why are we not talking about this massive elephant in the room? Like we we've already, we've established that it's bad. Why can't we put this context in the game? Right. It's very much like holding our hands over our eyes and just not wanting to say, Oh, you know, this bad word or whatever. It's not acknowledging the very real history that is very, very clearly very important to this location, to all of these characters, you know, to this time. Like, it's just, it's just egregious. It it feels, (laughs) it it is egregious. It feels intentionally negligent Mm -hmm. that, that we're walked right up to slavery where they hold our hand through here's the plantation here's this family business here's this exploitation of quote-unquote workers um but we're not going to tell you what it was why not just come out and say it right why not call it like it is call it out for what it was acknowledge that it was wrong and then go about discussing the ways in which it was wrong right and i have a quote (laughs) go for it from her interactive so There is someone on Tumblr, which I don't use Tumblr a whole lot, so I'm not super familiar with who this person is, but their account name is nancythedrew.tumblr.com. And a few years ago, they had a ton of questions about this game because a lot is left unanswered uh, or it's left vague enough that the, the player has to kind of fill things in for themselves. And they sent this list of questions to her interactive. Her interactive came back with a statement about why they didn't put slavery in the game or why they didn't make it more of an obvious theme. Um, And so I'll just read this here. So their question was, or one of their questions was, what was the Thornton family business? And this is their answer. This was kept intentionally vague, but the tools you'll find can point you in the direction of the answer. To answer this question, I have to engage with the question or with a question that many of our fans have been asking, why is there no mention of slavery in the game? The story of slavery must be told correctly. One day we may approach the topic, but it's not currently in the works. If we ever do, that will be the entire game. It won't be a subplot, and it will be exhaustively researched and based almost entirely in fact. This game was only left, and this isn't super grammatically correct, so I'm not sure exactly what they were trying to get at here. This game was only left room for slavery to be inserted as flavor or background information, and none of us felt comfortable using slavery as entertainment. So yes, the information about the business is vague, but that is because we don't want to half grapple with a tough question. With issues like slavery, even a positive seeming message can actually do more damage than good. A common conclusion (laughs) when talking about things like slavery is those were bad people a long time ago. That is entirely true, but the secondary message that it sends is so we don't need to worry about that stuff now. We're better, more civilized people now. That's not a great message to send because it encouraged complacency. We, uh, when you approach a serious subject, you have to you have to add you sorry you have a responsibility to add to the conversation. Our games most likely are not up to that particular task. I would argue that they do add this as a flavor in the background of the game. <sighs> it's just that they don't say it, and that's so much worse. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, it's also so I'm sorry. It's just also so 
upsetting when you think about the fact that these games are marketed to preteen girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thought that, oh, we're not going to talk about slavery because, you know, we can't add to the conversation or whatever. It's like the same reason why they leave slavery out of textbooks and the realities of slavery out of textbooks. Like, oh, we can't teach yeah. our children this. Like, you know, they're not in a place to hear it or whatever. Or But it's like, no, you have to teach the children. <laughs> what if they learn that this is wrong? Teach the children. It would be so horrible. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so awful if children learn that slavery is well, bad? Well, and this is, this is the point, right? It's like when you don't talk about slavery, when you don't discuss it or in, in any capacity as this game did, like you're leaving it open for people to forget what has happened right? Yeah. To disregard what has happened, um, or even worse, to consider what has happened in the past to be acceptable, right? And be right. something that was fine, because nobody's talking about it. So it can't have been that big of a deal, right? Sure. So like, just you can't, <laughs> ah! the the irreparable harm that ignoring topics cause, like, especially when you're talking to children is like uh, inexcusable. It's just inexcusable to me. Right. Yeah. And the whole, if we do make a, a game someday, it would be the entire game, not just the subplot. I don't think anyone's asking for a slavery no. game. No one wants oh my God, a no. mystery about slavery. No, that's, dark and at best disrespectful and even more profiting off of slavery right exactly <laughs> which is what they said they didn't want to do <laughs> would be way more problematic I, you have to acknowledge where you're at it would have been just as easy to set this game on some rando farm sure. that was not supposed to be a plantation and still have the same sure. mystery just some rich northern family why not mm -hmm. no we have to throw in the southern flavor mm -hmm. which is exactly what they're saying that they were trying to avoid doing here it's so strange to me that this is their explanation for it when none of that is good yeah it definitely <sighs> feels like a massive cop out i agree 100 percent. why not either address it head on yeah. or just just not set the game at a plantation. You can't, you cannot tell me that this game is not supposed to be a plantation, that that's not supposed to be the setting. <laughs> yeah. There's a cotton gin in the thing. There's a book on civil war spies in the front room, mm -hmm. which is, which does mention slavery. It has one sentence of a mention of slavery, but it does mention slavery in the civil war because you can't talk about the cotton gin and not talk about slavery. <laughs> I'm like, right. Ah! also in in that book about the the civil war heroes who were spies two out of the five women that they mentioned were confederate they spies. mentioned harriet tubman in the book they mentioned yeah. harriet tubman as a confederate yeah. spy which thank god right first of all yeah and they didn't just make it all yeah. the white rich ladies right but like sure but they <laughs> harriet tubman is in the game she's in the game y'all yeah yeah. So, okay. okay. <laughs> Can't. Somebody, I want to say it was Wade, somebody refers to the family as having been forged in the Civil mm. War. Mm. That's a weird thing to say. Well, my thing is, even if you say, okay, the Thorntons inherited this land post-Civil War or whatever... The Thorntons' business is cotton processing. I swear somebody said that in the game. So it's like they inherit a plantation and then they start a cotton processing business. How do we think that they did that? How do we think, obviously, all the cotton fields are there, right? They have cotton gins. What are we missing? What are we needing to fulfill this business of cotton processing? Hmm. Could it be a rich white lady who... <laughs> throws her cousin in jail for no reason that can't be it that can't be the no piece. i just it's just like clearly this family has profited off the system of slavery so so clearly even if you want to say that this family hired workers um 
even if you want to say that those people that they hired were freed former enslaved people, those people were former enslaved people. They had to have been. They were in the South, right? At the time of the Civil War, the business was cotton processing. Mm -hmm. So it was going to be people who probably did that before. Right. Right. And so not saying that that's who those people were is like. (laughs) Irresponsible at best. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and, and at worst is like causing harm, you know, to children today, to history, to society, like, (laughs) you know? And, and to, to use that as like a background or a, like a a draping in the background to this story of all the real sadness here is that a young woman died because her cousin was jealous of her. Like, and that is very tragic. It's very sad for this family, but that's not the tragedy on this Mm -hmm. island. Yes. Yes. It's awful, but it's far from the worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah. I, I said this in our last episode, but they discontinued ransom the seven ships for way less, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. way, way, way less definitely how they they grappled this topic yeah so my question for you Corey, is because i do think that this is one of their best games unfortunately do you think there is any way to redeem this game like any actions that her interactive could take today oh to to redeem this well, they're not going to discontinue it. Certainly not. not. It has to be one of their best money makers. Mm-hmm. With, I mean, wow. it's very popular. I mean, off the top of my head, I remaster it and set it in a different location, literally just anywhere but a plantation. Yeah. And then you wouldn't have a lot of the issues that we're running into here. Yeah. You could still have the whole family empire aspect of it without it being empire built around slavery, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I think the only way to do it, yeah, is to somehow remake the game with the with the correct references, with respect to the real context. And I honestly don't even know that it would be that challenging because really all they have done is like omit this massive part of history. Put one more book on the shelf where the rest of it is. Have them call them enslaved people and not workers or at least be more clear about the timeline oh and 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 make wade call it out because wade clearly has issues with it (laughs) yes so let's let wade have a rant about how his family's money was made off the civil war and and how that is awful and how he wishes you know he could change things, but he's not in a position of power in the company and let Jesslyn and stating him on the board be, uh, you know, a way for us to make reparations, you know, you know, and, and, yeah. and put money to that and let, let the Memorial park that gets built at the end of the game specifically mention the enslaved people that lost their lives here. Like, I right. <laughs> just, with that, with that right. not, I, I just, I just, one, I, I don't understand right. how that didn't happen to begin right. with. And two, I, well, I mean, I understand why it's not going to happen now because basically nobody works for her interactive anymore, <laughs> but the marketing team is going to remaster this game <laughs> themselves. <laughs> but you know, like, like, geez, geez. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> what do we talk about now? <laughs> the incest theory. Oh my God. There's so much with this game, y'all. So much, so much. I found a very <laughs> interesting theory online. I think this might have also been a Tumblr. And you told me about this a while ago. I did, yes. Okay, yeah, I found this one online. And I think a lot of it tracks. Okay, so we know that Clara never knew who her real father was. Um, her mother, Rosalie, took this secret to her grave. I don't remember if it's in this theory or if it's actually in the game, but I think at some point 
um, Claire or somebody says that they think that maybe she meant to tell her eventually when she was older, but she just mm. never got the chance kind yeah. of thing. I think they say that in the game. Oh, they do. Okay. Okay. So. so I'm not just <laughs> I think so. from, the, from the theory. <laughs> okay. That's good. Um, so yes, the main theory is that Rosalie's father. So Jackson Thornton, Clara's grandfather is actually Clara's real father. So what do you think about the theory? Uh, I think it makes a whole lot of sense. Here's my thing. Why would they put this? Why would they put this fact that Clara doesn't know her father in the game? That's to make, my question. To make the ownership of the Thornton Hall and the Thornton business a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And to make a point as to why Clara and Charlotte had this little. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. But what was that quote from uh, the note from Charlotte that says, Clara can't be trusted. Harper needs to know the truth. Right. 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 There's a lot. There's a lot here. Okay. So first of all, I just to to bring us back for a second. Jessalyn decides to come to Black Rock Island. First of all, as a like bachelorette party, which is wildly insane. In person bachelorette but, party. Yeah. <laughs> but but why? Right. But also, what it could be is that Jesslyn had an alternate reason for coming here. And there's evidence to that, because Addison even says that it seemed like Jesslyn was looking for something, right? And all of the things, through all of the puzzles that we get, the scavenger hunts, it's all very tailored, you know, towards specific things. And Jesslyn even puts in a puzzle this the answer to her, like, phone password, like, how to solve her phone password which why would she do that Mm. unless she thought something that somehow someone would need something could happen to her and someone would need to be able to get into her phone and why would someone getting into her phone help you know what i mean like what so jesseline jesseline knows something about about something and she's worried that something's going to happen to her and she needs a way for someone to be able to figure it out. Yeah. She had to prepare that well in advance of coming here. Like she made these puzzles as like, you know, a fun game for her bachelorette party supposedly or whatever, but these puzzles are not fun puzzles. They're like, they're like serious puzzles, right? So there was preparation here. So that means that she didn't just come here and was surprised by Harper. I mean, she, probably was but like she came here for it for a reason you know what i mean did she start looking for stuff before or after harper it's unclear because when addison okay addison is speaking she doesn't tell things in a chronological order um she kind of jumps around she she does say towards the end of the night it seemed like jesseline was looking for something so that makes sense um that 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 tracks with her being surprised by Harper and she's investigating after having met Harper, but it also could have, it also could have been before. It's not, it's not super clear. Right. But she was definitely trying to get into Charlotte's bedroom, which is interesting. I think that was happening before she was spooked by Harper. I think that that was on the scavenger hunt list list as well. Try to open Charlotte's door. Yeah. Getting to the ruins was on the scavenger hunt list. Mm, Okay. Um, Getting into the crypt was on the scavenger hunt list. And you could say, like, yeah, of course it is. They're going because they want to be spooked. They're trying to get to the spookiest locations. Okay. But also, it just seems like, from what Addison sets up for us, from what Jessalyn sets up with all of the puzzles and the games and everything, that there is more going on here, right? Like, there's some kind of subtext. Um, And so I just think there has to have been a reason for Jessalyn to have come here. And what reason could that be? So clearly, Thornton Hall is related to the Thorntons only right as far as we know right Mm -hmm. there are no other there are no other mysteries on this island aside from the thornton family Mm -hmm. right so it would make sense that jesslyn is coming here to investigate something about her family the only real massive secret that we know that nobody knows about the thornton family is clara's parentage that's Mm -hmm. it 
we don't get any other mystery, I guess, aside from maybe where is Harper, but uh, but that doesn't really loom over anybody's head, right? Harper's just not really a part of the family. The thing that looms over Clara, the thing that everybody brings up is who's Clara's father. And right. I think that that would be especially important to Jessalyn to know who, you know, who is her grandfather, right? Where does mm-hmm. she come from? Of course, she'd be interested in that. Colton also tells us that Jesslyn was trying, kept trying to tell him something about Clara, but mm-hmm. would never get around to what it was. And we know Colton wasn't there that night. So Jesslyn must have been trying to talk to him before she ever came to Black Rock Island. That means yeah. she knew something about Clara that she didn't want to tell Colton before. Or she did, but she also couldn't figure out how to say it right yeah what was that we never get an answer to that why would they bring that up why would they put that in there the only thing we know about clara or the only mystery we have surrounding clara is who her father is right it's got to be jesslyn had to come here to try to figure out who clara's father is and that's a question that we don't get answered at the end of the game no we all we get because the answer is too dark it's (laughs) right so why can't Clara be trusted and what does Harper need to know the truth about? If it's the parentage thing, wouldn't Clara also be interested in the truth about this? You know, like why, why does Harper specifically need to know the truth about Clara's father? Maybe Clara knows. Maybe she suspects. And I think that she probably does. Surely. And I think that Charlotte knew as well, based on this theory that I read that I'm totally buying into oh my gosh no you know that makes so much sense I don't I don't remember exactly I know I read what you sent me but I don't remember what it says but I but that tracks so well because okay so if we think that Clara's father is also her grandfather right yeah if we think that obviously this guy is a piece of shit of the highest order right Obviously, yes, yes. he's an abusive, horrible person. That tracks from what we know about Harper's gravestone, right? Um, Harper runs away. Mm-hmm. And he leaves that gravestone up as a reminder of what she's done to them, right? What she's put them through, right? So we already know this is not a nice guy. But it also tracks that Clara and Charlotte would know, but Harper doesn't. Because Harper has been farmed out. She's been sent to either boarding school or a, ah. um, you know, a, a an asylum, right? right? And she's run away. Like, she's not around. Maybe she doesn't know that this guy is actually, like, sexually abusive to the women in his family, right? Whereas yeah. Clara and Charlotte would both have probably either seen something or worse been the recipient of this kind of abuse. Wow, that's an excellent point. Okay, so, okay, this, it's um, nancy-who.tumblr.com came up with this excellent theory about, about the <laughs> oh my god. Um, they have a post, it's called Ghost of Thornton Hall Theories, and the main one, obviously, is that Jackson, who was Clara's grandfather, father of Rosalie and Harper and Charlotte's mother, and then also Wade's mother as well, um, we find a note, I think it's in the, the creepy room, whatever we want to call it with all the equipment and stuff. That's, I think, um, I think it was written by Jessalyn basically saying like, who was this Jackson? No, no, no. This is in the cellar. I remember this. It was in the cellar. It's, okay. It's in the cellar. It's in a book. And I think, oh, yes. Har- I think Harper writes it. I think it's implied that it's from Harper because at this point we don't know that jesslyn has been down there. Harper is down there and there's like some, I don't want to say crazy writing. There's like erratic writing on it as well like it it's it's written in a way that it sounds like it it could have been harper but harper would have been raised by jackson at some point or like she would have known who he was okay because jackson okay this family yeah they yeah, make yeah. it seem like it's this massive huge family with a lot of influence they, they dwindle down in numbers pretty quickly here so Rosalie dies, Clara's mother dies in 1973. Jackson doesn't die until 1988, so one year before Charlotte dies. Charlotte and Harper's parents both died in 1984, so five years before her death in a plane crash. And then Wade's mother doesn't die until like 2011. So Jackson, the owner of the Thornton family company, 
dies one year before Charlotte does, leaves everything to Charlotte. So this is how Charlotte has, you know, the power to will everything to Harper instead of Clara. Why not leave everything to, to Wade's mother, Virginia? Because mm-hmm. she didn't die until like 20 years after Charlotte did. Interesting. And that would have been his his daughter. Like, why not leave everything to her if for some reason Virginia knew what was going mm-hmm. on? And Charlotte's like, wait, why, you know, why would I get left everything? Why not Virginia? Why not my aunt, who would be in a much better position to take care of this company and run everything than a 20-year-old, mm-hmm. right? This is when she starts looking into Clara's parentage. Mm-hmm. And this is when she gets like, quote unquote, obsessed with Jackson. And I think that that's what that note is referring to. Mm. So that's what made me think that it was Jessalyn that wrote it because Harper, Harper would have known him. You yeah. Know? He died one year before Jessalyn was born. So she wouldn't have known him. She might know what his name was, but didn't know him as a person. That's, that's what they call the Virginia theory is that Virginia knew. And then possibly this was also happening to Virginia and was planning to tell Clara, but then never got the chance or decided against it. Okay, so I did make a note um, when I found this. So it was in like kind of like a book or like a notebook, um, this this note. And I assumed that it was from Harper, but it doesn't say who it was, who had written it. But I assumed it was Harper. But it says that Charlotte had an obsession with Jackson. And that Jackson was hiding something. Um, so I, I, this is why I assumed it was Harper who had written it because if like how Jessalyn wouldn't have known that Charlotte had an obsession with Jackson. Right. Harper could have. Sure. Um, but Jessalyn wasn't alive. So that's, that's why I leaned towards Harper um, but I think regardless, it doesn't matter the, you know, the theory still stands, mm-hmm. but I, I think it's interesting. I think Harper is just basically like trying to figure out what is going on with her yeah. family. And these are the mysteries that like she knows about, right. That Charlotte was obsessed with Jackson, that Jackson was hiding something. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, right. She's also, Charlotte was her sister, right? So she is incredibly wrapped up in her sister's death, um, obviously. And so she's trying to figure out what happened there because that's also, also obviously, of course, the big mystery. And turns out that that is Clara, right? But I just think it's interesting. Like, why would you put that in the game? You know what I mean? Because clearly the mystery that we're solving here is who killed Charlotte? And we learn that that's Clara. But why, what does Jackson have to do with that, right? He has mm-hmm. to have something to do with that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have written this note about it. Right. You know? Well, and this supports the whole, like, Clara was afraid that she was being pushed out of the family or whatever. She right. somehow learned that Charlotte was investigating Jackson, that Charlotte was close to or may already know what her real parentage was and was going to then like push her out of the family for that reason which i don't know why clara would be held at fault for well, this maybe just like chunned because nobody wants to acknowledge it kind of a thing sure sure which then in turn causes clara to get revenge by striking a match right yeah yeah, yeah. i still don't understand why well it could also be that clara didn't want anyone else to know who yeah. her real father was and she right. figures out that charlotte it knows and she might be about to tell someone she just wrote her out of her will what does that mean mm-hmm. she's got this knowledge and clearly this knowledge is compelling her to change things it's clearly changing how she feels about me so i've got to stop her from telling anybody else exactly yeah why did she change her will in the first place? That's like we, I that's get that so when she changes the will, Clara sees this right. as her being pushed out of the family even further. But what was the initial? Why? Like what kicked it off? Did she just so think they... that Clara was too racist and was going to make the company poorly? <laughs> or so they do do this switcheroo in the game where 
we're set up to think Harper is the crazy one in the family and Clara is the same level-headed one, right? And we read a note written by Charlotte in her room that's, or that her diary entry that says like, she's acting crazy or someone's acting crazy, right? And she's worried and she's got to protect her papers. So we're kind of set up to make us believe that that is Harper that she's talking about and Harper gets sent Mm -hmm. away. So that all makes sense in our mind, but then turns out, no, she must really be talking about Clara um, because Clara is ultimately the one that ends up killing her. So if, Clara was acting crazy. Why was Clara acting crazy? What was going on there? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was learning about her parentage and was severely fucked up as a result. That would track. Understandably. That would make sense. Um, So maybe it's that. And then maybe that makes Charlotte curious and she is trying to investigate. I I am interested to know. Okay, I feel like. At this point, the the incest theory is a strong, heavy hitter, but I feel like yep. we can't make it any farther without discussing Harper. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about Harper. Because it's so interesting to me, yeah. right? My biggest thing is that we're set up to think Harper is crazy, and Harper encourages us to believe that, either by willfully acting crazy, um, or um, maybe because she actually kind of is. Um, we and we don't really like know. Clara's feeding this into our ear the entire game as well. Right. Um, but there are several things that we learn about Harper, including that she apparently pushed, tried to push somebody off a roof. Try to push Clara off a roof, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is something that Claire, I think Clara brings up to us as to why Harper was sent away. Um, yeah. But why would Harper do that? Uh, there is there is just a lot that goes on between um, these three cousins or sisters and cousins between Clara, Harper, and Charlotte. That yeah. is very that is still very murky at the end of the game. Well, there's also, we find a news article in the crypt that says that after the funeral or during the funeral, Harper had some violent outbursts. She ended up causing like thousands of dollars worth of damage and then uh, like essentially got arrested or maybe they took her to an asylum at that point. Mm -hmm. But um, we can look at this as she suspected Clara Mm -hmm. of killing her sister. Oh, she definitely did. Had... What, in retrospect, what would be a reasonable reaction? You know, mm-hmm. someone murdered your sister. I would also lose my mind on them at the funeral. Like, I would get violent if I thought that that were the case. And everybody's just acting normal. Maybe this was revenge. Push her off the roof. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think that has to happen before. I almost wonder. Oh, the roof. The thing roof thing. The I feel like has to happen before. But I. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, the the article is a is a big thing to bring up because the, the, um, a police officer of some kind is giving a quote. Maybe it's the chief of police. I don't, I don't remember, um, is giving a quote about that incident and he is sympathetic and he's like, you know, it's understandable, you know, that this kind of situation would bring about, you know, a lot of feelings and, um, you know, a strong reaction or whatever. So he's not harsh or anything, but he does say, um, that Harper, seem to believe that her sister's death wasn't being fully investigated. Um, and yep. then that's why she lashed out. So it's pretty clear that from the beginning, Harper suspected Clara of killing her. And it's, it's unclear when Harper started to become the quote unquote crazy one. Maybe she became crazy when a certain narcissist <laughs> said it couldn't have been me. It must've been her. Mm -hmm. You know, this is her problem, not me being guilty. It's also very interesting to me, the timeline of this all because of their ages. I can't, it, I really wish we knew more about Harper's timeline in particular, because when she is under 18, over 18, what's happening when, who's alive at what point and who is responsible for her care at what points of her life. Um, is something I'm like murky on and something I, um, I wish I knew more about, but like, my thought is like, at what point, and even for, um, 
Clara, it's kind of confusing to me too, um, thinking about her age and her mother's age and, you know, when her mother, how old her mother was when she had her, because she would have been in her twenties. I want to say 25. 25. Yeah. 25. And Clara and Charlotte are the same age. They were both born in 68. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Harper's three years younger. And Wade is two years younger than Harper. Okay, so he's the youngest of the cousins. Um, Yeah, and and I just find it so interesting. This family seems super, I don't know, enmeshed is not the right term, but like... (laughs) It's not the wrong term either. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But like, they're like all, like everything seems like stacked on top of each other and like, these really complicated <laughs> layers. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, it's unclear. Are, are they all living on this island all the time? Does nobody ever move away? That's a good question. And when when was Thornton Hall abandoned? Presumably this is my after thought. Charlotte's death. Presumably. But, like, they also just, like, left all the furniture. They left all the art. All the art they left of their yeah. family. And they just... Of, and they just leave it there to rot and get super damaged and all the books and it's wild. Like, yeah, I, I just, and like, this is a wealthy family. So it would have been super easy, even if they didn't want to look at any of this crap ever again, just pay somebody to put it all in storage. Right. That's what somebody would do. You wouldn't just leave it here, but it literally Dang. looks like they fucking ran and left everything and never came back. 1989 when where is their factory or their processing plant whatever it is because they make it sound like they have people that are working on this island but then they do also say that after all the fires and wade's prison time and all that that they built another factory Mm -hmm. just off the mainland Mm -hmm. so are they even still using this island at all i don't think so i don't think so okay i think it's entirely abandoned okay which so so okay so my questions are were all of these cousins living here on this island together? Were their parents all living on this island together? And when did they stop? Specifically, Clara's mother, was she living here for, for like, what, like, what was that? What was that situation like? Because if they weren't, this doesn't make any sense. And if they were, it also doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> You know, I think that probably Jackson and his wife, Whitney, were living in Thornton Hall, Mm -hmm. um, like while the cousins were growing up. And then Rosalie, so Clara's mother died when Clara was young, however old. So she goes to live with Charlotte Harper and their parents, Roger and Mariana. Yeah, but presumably that was here, right? Presumably that was on Black Rock Island. It, it would have been somewhere, but then they Well, but they Charlotte's die. bedroom is here. <laughs> right, but then they die, so they go, the three oh. cousins go to live with Jackson. Oh, gosh. Is what is happening in my mind, because we know Charlotte lived here, definitely. Right. The owner of the property is Jackson, so right. I want to say he lives here, and if he's now taking in these three girls... I assume now they're living here. So if Mariana and Roger didn't live here, they must have lived pretty close by. And same with Rosalie and Clara. Oh, this is super dark. Or maybe they lived elsewhere, but then she dies, so Clara has to go live with her aunt and uncle. This is super dark. Why did Virginia and Luther, Wade's parents, not take the three girls in? Gosh, that's a great question. Why would Virginia, if she knew... Yeah. What Jackson was up to say, yeah, let let these three teen girls go live. With Maybe you. she wanted to, but she Pedophile. wasn't in a position to be able to. to Maybe Jackson, because Fair he's enough. powerful and wealthy, um, was like, no, these girls are going to be under my care now. Maybe he didn't like Wade because Wade, Clara implies that Wade had like sketchy friends. So maybe that he was involved in kind of criminal activity from a young age. And maybe he thinks that Virginia isn't a great parent to Wade. And is mm. able to use his influence. Well, Jackson's the worst parent. Right, but people don't know that, right? People don't know that sure. he's... no, I know, I know. <laughs> he's, he's bad, right? So, God, mm. this is dark. Yeah, it's very dark. Ugh. Oh, it makes me ick. Also, where is Jessalyn's father? 
That's <laughs> a great question. He's on the family tree. He's on this family yeah. tree. There's no death year, so we assume he's alive. Is he Maybe involved? He's separated. Were they never married? Are they Maybe. divorced? Are they separated? Is he aware that his child is missing and he just doesn't come to yeah. help? Or maybe he's the only one who cares and is out there looking for Jessalyn night and day and we just don't hear about <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with <laughs> devoted father who genuinely is trying. <laughs> Something interesting, I think, to point out, just to note, is that Jessalyn's last name is Thornton, even though her father's last name isn't Thornton. Her mother is Thornton. So she's taken her mother's Mm -hmm. last name. Wade has also taken his mother's Mm -hmm. last name. And Charlotte and Harper didn't take their father's last name because their mother was the Thornton. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what's going on there? I mean, it's got to be. This influential family. Yeah. Well, and also you got to think like, uh, I'm sure. uh, I mean, this is just a theory, but like Jackson not having any sons. Mm -hmm. I bet it was a thing that he was upset about not carrying on the Thornton family name. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. Gross male pride, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And wanted that to be the case. And I bet, I bet that he, that's probably why he wanted to take those girls in aside from any gross, disgusting um, sexual abuse stuff that I don't want to think about. Um, Mm -hmm. like, I bet it's because he wanted a hand in their upbringing to carry on the Thornton legacy. And I bet that's also why he gave the company to a Charlotte upon his death and not Virginia, because Mm. he didn't think Virginia was suitable. Imagine thinking about that about your own child. Oh, no, this is a Jackson Thornton hate podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of layers to this game. <laughs> okay, and also at the end, sorry, this is kind of a side note, but we find out that at the end, Jessalyn takes over the company. Mm-hmm. Why? Why doesn't Harper get to take over the company? At this point, we've kind of, I mean, not entirely, but she's somewhat redeemed, right? And the fact that yeah. she was right about Clara. We also, so yeah, so Clara, there's at the end when we get all of our resolution and everything, there's no mention of Clara getting arrested. Right. We, I mean, even if she claims that whatever lighting, you know, lighting the house on fire wasn't intended to kill Charlotte, that's still manslaughter. Still Um, arson. Still arson. We also have learned that she um, has locked her workers into the factory right Mm -hmm. i don't know what kind of charge that is but it can't be good um (laughs) like like the like the offenses are like stacking up on clara we don't she's not even arrested they arrested fiona at the end of continent of (laughs) castle malloy for no reason she didn't do anything wrong and we they don't arrest clara oh well, presumably that was just uh, uh, an omission in the writing <sighs> because in one timeline sh- or two timelines she is dead, so oh, maybe true. they just forgot to write in the police aspect of it. But... Or maybe they just hoped that everyone would choose to kill her. <laughs> oh, that's the canon timeline. Claire is actually dead. Claire is dead. She pays her. No I'm kidding. Oh no, I think Nancy genuinely would rescue everyone if it were Nancy yeah. deciding. Mm. Anyway, yeah, so why can't Harper inherit? Yeah, and we know Wade doesn't even want to, so that explains right. that. I mean, I'm sure probably Harper doesn't want to either. But, fair enough. But it would be fair for it to go to her. Like, it would be more fair for it to go to Harper and then Harper to give it to Jessalyn. Like, I, I could see that happening way more than I would see uh, Jessalyn getting it immediately. Why would Jessalyn want it either? close up shop y'all it's it's over yeah seriously <laughs> oh okay we have to talk about the haunting and how it's all played oh, off yeah. as being carbon monoxide poisoning some of it is they admit that jessalyn and harper took turns dressing up as charlotte so that they could move about the house without being noticed okay but the rest of it is written off as carbon monoxide which i mm, 
That is super questionable to me. To be yeah. fair, I am not a, a doctor. Uh, I am uh, not even <laughs> a doctor of philosophy. I am no no kind of doctor. Um, <laughs> but I thought I was under the impression that when you're under the effects of carbon monoxide poisoning, it clears up kind of quickly when you go out into fresh air. I don't know. Maybe it depends on how long you've been exposed and at what levels. I think it probably does. But I would just like to point out that several of the hauntings and weird occurrences happen outside of Thornton Hall, away from the carbon monoxide. Yeah. Several statues move in the graveyard, and we get a full-blown apparition over in the ruins, which is twice. far away from Thornton House, twice. Yeah. And one that results in Nancy passing out. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I just don't, I don't, I don't buy that it was all carbon monoxide poisoning. I don't think scientifically that makes sense. But as I said, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> so I wouldn't know. Yeah. No, oh, it's okay. just my absolutely uninformed opinion. Some things you definitely cannot fake, like how even if it was Jocelyn or Harper dressing up, like when we see her in the hallway, how would they have just yeah. disappeared in front of Nancy's eyes? You know? Yeah, no way. There's no yeah. time that we see Charlotte and she doesn't like apparate or dissolve or burn alive, which is horrifying. Okay, I have a question for you. So during the game, Harper leaves us that note to go into the tunnels to try to see who's sneaking around the house. And we see Wade trying to get into Charlotte's bedroom. Do we ever learn what that is about? What he was doing? Why was he trying to do that? I think that's just a convenient way for us to get the key that he drops. But maybe he... But he said he would never step foot in that house. Yeah, so why was he why is he? And in here? here he is. He, I mean... The only thing we know about Wade is that he likes to ghost hunt, I guess. So maybe he's looking for Charlotte's ghost or evidence of Charlotte. Um, but then, but why? Like, and It's not like you could say... We don't yeah, need it. It's not like you could say he was looking for Jessalyn, because <laughs> he has no reason to believe Jessalyn's behind that locked door that's been locked since the 80s. So why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and he was also very explicit that he's here to look for Jesslyn, but he's not going into the house right. to look for Jesslyn. Hmm. So he also says, come on, Charlotte, you got to help me here, yeah. honey, or something. Like, help me open the door, but for why do you need a new room? Right, but he's why? He's looking for something that he thinks is in there, probably. Well, surely, right? But for what reason? We never get an answer hmm. to that. I'm trying to think of some way it could fit into our theories, but I don't know that I can. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's in there that he could possibly want or what he might think is in there. Her her diary's in there. Her little jewelry box. That's it, except for an Easter egg. Yeah, the place where you put all the Easter eggs. Which, I'm so dumb. I got all three and then didn't put them in there. I've never done it. I don't give a crap about Easter eggs. Doesn't... I read that it gives you, does it give you like a scene or something? Not a scene, but once you put all the eggs in there, it unlocks a secret compartment. And it's like you get an invitation from the ghosts of Black Rock Island that invites you to join them forever. But I read that if you call Savannah afterwards and tell her about that, something happens. Something weird happens. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'm missing out on something. Makes me kind of want to go back and play it just for that. Just to see. Yeah, I read that. I think I read that in the uh, Game Boomers walkthrough. But oh, um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what Wade could have been up to. One thing that I did make a note of: when Nancy insults his boots. Yes, I made a note of that too. Nancy is a classist asshole. She's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's you know, Wade says something about like ghosts. Uh, I don't know something something about ghosts and nancy says like oh that's super philosophical for a guy wearing boots exactly what what is that about what is wrong with wearing boots first of all second of all wade gets super upset but has a great comeback about how um it's actually very smart to wear boots if you're standing around in a muddy graveyard (laughs) yeah and traipsing through the woods all day nancy and what exactly i mean are boots even like class specific aren't Boots just a utility thing? Like, 
I don't know. Nancy, I'm pretty sure, like, just a few games ago, you were wearing cowgirl boots on Shadow, at Shadow Ranch. But... And you're telling me that when you go to Egypt to investigate um, Queen Nefertari, you're not wearing boots in the sand? Right. I would hope so. Just walking barefoot on the scalding sand? <sighs> yeah, that's weird. That was a weird addition. I don't know. know. There's not really much point to it, but it's just an interesting yeah. little conversation. No, I made a note about it, too. It annoyed me a lot. Okay. Oh, okay. I do. We should also talk about really quick the phone, the phone conversations in this game, because. Yes. So first of all, the contacts we have is Savannah, obviously Addison, um, and then Bess. But when you call Bess, Ned answers the phone, and I was so upset. <laughs> I'd like I no one call to talk to you, Ned. <laughs> I just thought that was funny, but I will say that aside from that moderate betrayal, I mean, it is because <laughs> Ned and Bess are together, so we do get to talk to Bess, but um, yeah. the conversation, like the banter back and forth between Bess and Ned is actually hilarious, um, and I think probably like yeah. some of the best phone conversations like throughout all of the games, because Bess says that Ned is an active listener who is very quick to Stockholm. Yes. <laughs> oh the burn oh the gosh. burn <laughs> which is so true and so accurate right yeah, like yeah. he he is an active listener who is very quick to to become subject to stockholm syndrome so she was saying that as mm -hmm. like a way of saying that like actually ned and i get along really great <laughs> yeah I like that you can choose to insult Ned in this game as well. It mm -hmm, gives you that option. Mm -hmm. It as um, Bess is like, oh, tell us about Colton. Is he cute? Give us the answer in a scale of Neds. <laughs> is it half a Ned, one Ned? And you can choose. You can be like, oh, zero Neds, one Ned, ten I Neds. I said ten so Neds. I said ten Neds. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's definitely not. I mean, like, no, I'm no, no, no Ned. I mean, like, I am a Ned hater, but I don't hate on Ned's appearance. I'm sure he's a very attractive guy. Um, not that we ever see him. Not that him. we ever we see him. See him he's just described. Um, but Colton is not that attractive, in my opinion. No, he's um, not. He's kind of yeah. creepy. Well, especially he wears, like, a weird, like, uh, what is it, like a neckerchief ascot? or something? Yeah, an ascot or something. That's odd. I'm like, I don't trust anybody who wears an ascot. <laughs> How old are you, Colton? Come on. <laughs> We don't actually know, but yeah. It's a great um, point. Great point. Also, can we talk about how he is definitely supposed to be older than Jessalyn by at least a few years, if we're being generous. And he somehow blames, kind of, somehow, somewhat blames Jessalyn and her family for their marriage <laughs> instead of, like, taking responsibility. Like, you can say no, Colton. You don't yeah, have to seriously. marry Jessalyn. Nobody forcing you. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we covered this, but we there is a scene where we can like spy on Clara in the living room and she's like on a phone call with Colton's parents. Like <gasps> you didn't pay Lexi enough to go away and then I we didn't find out that essentially that. you didn't see that I part? didn't see that one. Okay. Well, they like conspired, Clara and Colton's parents conspired paid Lexi off to like go away and break up with Colton so that she could set them up and was like oh you know you want we want your money and you want our family's name's influence blah 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 so we're gonna make this little arranged marriage yeah yeah so wow. like Clara did like Jessalyn's not involved with it she actually didn't get involved with the arrangement but Woo! Clara definitely did set all this up mm. yeah I didn't see that one that's that's oh, weird. Oh, man. Okay. Wow. See, this is what... There's so much that you can just absolutely overlook in this game and miss. Mm -hmm. Just by not... There's a lot of subtext as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Flashlight score? Are we, is there anything else that you have? Oh, We've been going for a while. No. Here. I mean... Oh. It's... That's so hard. I know. Oh, God. I don't know, man. It's a really good game. It's so disappointing. It is. It's it's the the problem is is that it's such a good game, and and then you play through it all and and there's no like it just it makes you angry at the end, you know. It, yeah. 
and also somewhat like you have so many questions so many questions mm-hmm. and so much underlying like rage and did mm-hmm. I miss something like what's going on and and still you're almost left with more questions at the end of the game than answers which is not how you want to end a mystery story I do just want to say <laughs> yeah that um that tumblr post with all the question and answers it's just like geez if people have this many questions after the end of it then did you do a good job and I get some, it's just too adult for what they were trying to go for. It does make you want to replay it over and over and over again to try to figure out what it is that's actually going on. Um, and it's it's enjoyable to play through. Um, yeah. The puzzles are good. They're not, like, crazy unrealistic as sometimes the puzzles in Nancy Drew games yeah. can be. It all makes sense as to why they were created for the most part because Jess Lim was coming up with puzzles for this scavenger hunt thing. Charlotte right. was obviously putting things in code and hiding stuff behind locked doors and stuff. That all makes sense. Also, the family is super wealthy, so it makes sense as to how they would have the resources to like make these kinds of build these kinds of contraptions right yeah um so that all makes sense i so i guess four out of five i would give it four out of five flashlight really yeah yeah i was gonna say probably three or three and a half or four as well just because yeah i think it loses a flashlight just because of yeah it has to plantation ignoring or not addressing the civil war the way it should have and the aftermath of that so, it's such a mm-hmm. dichotomy because part of me wants to give it zero stars and part of me also <laughs> wants to give it like five stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but I can't. It's so hard to land somewhere in between that, you know, because it feels like doing either disrespects either facet. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to stick right at my three and a half then. then yeah. <laughs> How many games now? Waverly, uh, I know. Crystal Skull, we're I never gonna, we Ma- Castle Malloy. We're never going to give a game five flashlights, or we're never... <laughs> oh, no, we did. We did. Um, Last Train. I think you did. I think you did. Oh, maybe. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we hope you enjoyed that episode. <laughs> regular truths um we hope that you found all of this stuff as interesting as we did um and if you would like to continue this conversation uh you know shoot us a message over on instagram or if you're going to at anybody about this game please also at us because we want to read what you are writing um yeah i'll leave the um the tumblr post that i mentioned i'll leave those in the episode description so that you guys can analyze those please as much as we did please tell us your <laughs> thoughts about that so do you want to talk about what we're covering next Corey? yes next we are going to do another game game number 25 alibi in ashes Ooh, ooh. Oh, i'm so excited chief mcginnis is in this game chief mcginnis brenda carlton is in this game sorry i got so excited about my mic <laughs> Brenda Carlton is in this game. Um, it's set in River Heights. Bess, George, oh, Deirdre. Deirdre. <laughs> yeah, it's our first game set in River Heights. Our only game set in River Heights. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, our first game where Nancy is the culprit. Ooh. Not to spoil too much for you guys, but that Nancy's is the premise spoiler. of the game. It's, it's a good one. I, I think it's a good one. Well, I'm so excited, and we'll see you next time, Regular Dreams. Yeah, see you then. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you like this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at Regular Nancy Drew and Twitter at Regular ND. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $3 level vote on upcoming episode topics and get exclusive access to our Scoop Sesh series. And all patrons receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, thanks for listening. listening.